What's happening YouTube? Today I want to talk a little bit about what I find to be the best camera settings for street photography. Now I'm going to talk specifically about Fuji cameras, but a lot of these settings are on other camera manufacturers as well. I used to use similar ones when I shot with Canon. And I know what you're thinking, this is a really boring topic for a YouTube video, but once you have your camera settings dialed into how you like them, you don't have to think that much about them and it just makes your whole street photography experience way smoother and far less stressful. All right, so, what the fucking hell? I'll just switch, I'll just, just switch. I'll just, I don't need to do a transition. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is work our way through the menu system and starting off here in image quality, I like to shoot with fine plus raw. So I get a JPEG and a raw file. If you just want a JPEG, that's fine. If you just want a raw, that's fine. Pick whatever one of those you want. I like to have both. Most of the time, the JPEG is actually pretty good out of the camera and it's pretty usable. But also a lot of the time, you want a bit more flexibility in editing. So it's nice to have the raw file there. And also it's nice to have that backup file just in case you need it. So fine plus raw. In raw recording, I changed mine to compressed. It started off with uncompressed, but the file size was like 50 megabytes for a raw file. That was just too big for me. I don't want, I, I don't really have enough storage space for it to be that size. I just find that the lossless compressed raw files are good enough and I don't need all that extra information in there for a small amount of difference in the pictures. Film simulation, I like to use classic chrome. I like that color profile. You can pick whatever one you like. I also sometimes like to shoot with Acros plus the red, the red filter if I feel like shooting black and white. Otherwise, I just leave it on classic chrome. All these other things I don't really touch. I like to change the highlight tone. I bring it down a little bit so it tends to mute those highlights a little bit more. I leave the shadow tone at zero. I put the color to plus two because classic chrome is kind of muted, so just giving it a little bit of a boost of color helps. I leave the sharpness at zero and the noise reduction at minus one. And all of those things will only apply to the JPEG file. The raw file won't have any of these color profiles applied to it. It'll just be a raw file. All right, so then in the autofocus manual focus section, I'm gonna go down to the AF illuminator here and turn this off because if you have it on, there's a light on the front of the camera that will come on to help the camera to focus, but you don't always want that light to be coming on in public and distracting people or making them look up at your camera. I'm then gonna go down into manual focus assist and I'm gonna switch it on to focus peak highlight. And I like red highlights, you can put it on the, the you can put it on the dark areas, you can put it in the blue, wherever you want. Um, but I think red highlight works well for me. And that just means that when I'm in manual focus, the areas that are in focus are gonna show up with like a red highlight around them. And that just tells me where the focus area is and it makes it much easier to manual focus things. Then we're gonna go down into the shooting settings. And the first one I'd like to change is drive settings. So if I'm on high speed, it'll be a burst rate of 11 frames per second. I usually don't use that. I will use the low speed one though at four frames a second. I think that works pretty well, especially if you're getting people walking through a scene and you're trying to get multiple frames. 11 seems like a ton and four generally seems like enough. If you really want extras to find that perfect one, I guess 11 would be fine, but I find four is good enough. Then shutter type, I often have it on ES, which is the electronic shutter. You can switch that to manual shutter if you prefer, but I actually have a custom button on the camera that allows me to switch between the two. So if you're in a really quiet area, I would use electronic shutter because then you don't distract anybody and nobody really will notice you shooting as much. But if you're somewhere where there's LED lights or certain types of lights will produce like this banding effect, with the electronic shutter, and that's where manual shutter helps a lot. All right, then under the sound setup, this is pretty important to switch off the autofocus beep volume, the self timer beep volume, just, just because, why not? The operation volume, so that's like the buttons, like when you're using the D-pad, it just makes it a little bit quieter and less annoying. The headphones volume I just left there, and the shutter volume I put off because otherwise you get a weird electronic shutter noise. And playback volume I just left where it was because I'm, I'm generally not record videos. 
So EVF brightness is another one to look for. If it's really bright out, I might manually increase it so I can see a little bit better. Um, but generally it's fine at zero and the EVF color, you can change that to your own preference. So the LCD brightness, I, I've got it on minus five just now, but that's just for this video so that it doesn't make the camera underexpose everything else. Generally I have it at plus three or plus five on a really bright day. Um, just so that I can see the screen a little bit better, it makes things easier. Uh, the image display here, this is kind of personal preference, but I have it off just now. Sometimes I'll set it to a half second, so I just get a brief look at the picture that I, take, that I just took. But having it off kind of removes that, that need to just see the picture immediately after, so that you focus more on what's happening in front of you and you're less likely to miss what's going on. All right, the next thing to go down to is the framing guideline. Now I like to have a framing guideline on the screen. So I just have the grid of like nine boxes on the screen that helps me to use the rule of thirds or to frame things in the center and just make sure that my lines are all straight. So I like to have that on. And then going into button dial settings, going into this menu, I have the left button on the D-pad set to film simulation so I can change between black and white or classic chrome whenever I like. The right button on the D-pad I have set to the shutter type so that'll change between manual and electronic shutter without me having to go into the menu system. I also have this histogram here from time to time that comes in handy and auto focus on button is set to this AFL button here. So if I want to pre-focus or back button focus, I can use this button, but I can also just focus with the shutter button. But the nice thing is if you're on manual focus and want to use autofocus, you can just press this button and it will autofocus like normal. And when you let go, it'll go back to being manual focused. All right, the command dial setting. So that's the one on the front and the one on the rear here, these like rolling dials. I like to set the front one to F and the back one to SS, which is shutter speed. I don't remember what the F means, but whenever it's set to F, it doesn't do anything. So maybe it means f all, I have no idea. Command dial SS operation, I'll leave that one on so that it will change the shutter, shutter speed with this one here. The ISO dial setting, I like to have on the command dial. So the one on the front, like the rolling button that's on the front of the camera, will actually control the ISO. So you can put it to the maximum and it will stay on auto, or you can control it yourself and roll it down to have it at a lower setting if you want. All right, the next thing that I wanna set up is under save data. So the reason that I, sh that I chose RAW and JPEG earlier is so that I can separate it to two separate cards. So I go into this card slot setting and if your camera doesn't have two card slots, never mind, just ignore this. Your RAW and JPEG will save to one card and you can separate it out when you're on a computer and that's fine. But I like to do RAW to one card and JPEG to another. So I select this RAW slash JPEG and now card slot one will do RAW and card slot two will do JPEG. That way if one of the cards corrupts, I still have a backup of the other one and if for some strange reason, a security guard or someone makes me delete photos, it's kind of sneaky because I've got two card slots and I should still be able to keep the other photos unless they're savvy enough to check that my camera doesn't have two card slots. All right, that's it for the menus. So now I'll show you how I have my dials set. All right, so now that I've got the menu system out of the way, depending on the situation that I'm in will depend on the exact settings that I have on the top of the camera here. So generally, if I'm just walking around, snapping super candid shots and I'm not really sure where my next subject's coming from, I'll just leave the ISO on auto, I'll leave the shutter speed on auto, and I'll manually control the aperture here. If I'm feeling either lazy or if I've got something in one of my hands, if I'm carrying a bag or something like that, I'll just leave everything on auto and then I can just shoot freely and not really worry about what any of the settings are. But usually if I'm in bright sunlight or I want a lot to be in focus, I'm shooting around about f8. And if it's darker, I'll just 
bump it down to f2 or if I want to get a nice shallow depth of field, something like that. So that's generally how I just have everything set up. For focus, I'll have the center focus point just always dialed in there. As I say, maybe sometimes if I'm being lazy or have something, if I'm carrying something, I'll widen the focus points to just like a zone focusing there. Um, but usually I'll have it on a pretty small box right in the center and that's how it is 90% of the time. For metering, generally I'll use the average setting, which is this one all the way on the end, which is just an empty set of brackets. And what it does is gives an average across the whole of the frame and it, I feel like it's the one that leaves me the least likely to blow out any highlights. So I just prefer it that way and I like the, the way that the meter reads off of that. So when I've found a scene or interesting light or, or something like that where I'm sitting in one spot waiting on a subject to walk through the frame or something to happen in the frame, I'll actually set everything on in manual. So I'll start with the shutter speed and you know if someone if if it's going to be someone standing still or not nothing moving fast in the frame i'm going to set it to like 1 1 25th of a second maybe 1 2 50th or or it faster if it's super bright and i want to get it and i want to make things darker but usually around about there works pretty good and then i'll set the aperture so if i want to get lots of if i want to get everything in focus i'll bring it down to about f8 or if everything is if, if it's really dark and I need to get more light in there, I'll set it to F2 and that's fine. And then the last thing that I pick is the ISO. So if it's super bright, I'm gonna set it to 200. If it's super dark, I'm gonna raise it up to whatever I need to, to just get the exposure how it is. I don't really mind raising the ISO up high and getting grain in the picture, but if I can get away with it, I'll leave it on auto. And then for focusing, what I'll do is I'll switch the camera over to manual focus and I'll use this AFL button if I want to do autofocus but then I can use the ring on the lens to set the focus where I want and I can use the highlight peaking within the viewfinder so that I know where the focus is and how much area it's actually covering. All right, so hopefully you found that helpful. As I said at the start, I know this is a super boring topic and I don't really like technical stuff that much, but I found this useful for myself. Once I knew how to do it, it just made the whole process of taking street photos way easier. It streamlined all of the sort of like thinking that I had to do while I was out shooting and allowed me to just like remove all of the distractions because my brain does not work in that sort of technical way at the same time as trying to be creative and being in a public space where sometimes it's kind of awkward having your camera and taking pictures of things that people aren't normally taking pictures of. It just like takes away one more thing that you have to think about so you can just concentrate on getting nice photos. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments if you did. Hit that like button if you liked the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you're one of the new subscribers around here, thank you very much for subscribing. The channel has grown a lot more than it has done in the past, in the last couple months, and it's given me a bit more motivation to actually go out and make videos. So thank you very much for that. The next video coming up will be out shooting street photography in Philadelphia again. So yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.